given your claim about raising the amount of money in the NHS in Scotland, if that's the case, why are these health boards having to make these cuts? Well, two reasons, Glenn. Firstly, the amount of money in the NHS is increasing, but as Jackie knows, as anybody who knows anything about the NHS also knows, the cost of delivering health care goes up. We have an ageing population, for example, the, the cost of drugs and equipment goes up. There are always new drugs So you drugs haven't provided enough funding? But secondly, well, that goes back to my point about the overall cut in the Scottish budget, but the second point is this. Well, you accept that there's well, not enough money to go around. There is more money than there has ever been before in the NHS under this SNP government. But if there government. was enough, the health boards wouldn't the have to be making think, the cuts, would the they? The more fundamental point is this, Glenn. But isn't if, that the fundamental well, no, point, that the if they had enough point, money, they wouldn't be making the cuts? The fundamental point, I think, is this, that notwithstanding the fact that money is tight, not just in the NHS, but across the public sector, even if that wasn't the case, there is a need for the NHS in the light of the changing pattern of health care to look critically at how it delivers services and the staffing requirements it needs. So is Jackie some of those seriously staff are saying, it, no, what I'm saying is we deliver health care. Take the city of Glasgow, for example. It, there are new, two brand new day case hospitals in this city of Glasgow. That means more people are being treated as day cases. Fewer people are therefore having to be admitted to hospital for their operations. But are you more saying that 1,250 posts can go in somewhere well, like Greater no, Glasgow I, and Clyde we're talking and about that patient care will not suffer as a well, result? That's the job of the SNP government. We're talking about a, a workforce projection. Now, Jackie but Bailey you're not is guaranteeing that, well, are you? Can I, can I just, Jackie Bailey is criticising me for asking for the workforce projections no, no, of health no, boards. No, sorry, I'm no. doing that. Our Scotland political correspondent, Glenn Campbell, has more. Michelle Thompson was endorsed by SNP leader Nicola Sturgeon. I find that there's a great many... A star rose in the Scottish referendum, arguing for independence on behalf of the Business for Scotland campaign. Now Michelle Thompson's own business practice is under intense scrutiny as police begin investigating property deals linked to her name. Today in the Scottish Parliament, tough questions for the SNP leader. Before her election, Michelle Thompson dealt in property, buying houses like these at knockdown prices and selling them on for a markup, sometimes on the same day. The police are now investigating 13 property deals carried out on behalf of Michelle Thompson and her associates by a solicitor who's been struck off for his involvement because a tribunal found that he'd overlooked the potential for mortgage fraud whether or not that actually took place. The sale of this house near Glasgow is one of those under investigation. Michelle Thompson brokered a deal for it to be bought for £38,000 more than the sellers received. At the time, well, we just wanted a quick sale. But now, five years down the line, yeah, I feel as if we're gone. Michelle Thompson says she's always acted within the law and will help police. She's quit the SNP while the investigation's underway. Do you regret endorsing Michelle Thompson? Look, I don't want to be in a position where any SNP member, candidate, elected representative is in a position where they're under any kind of investigation. So, you know, I regret being in that position. Of course I do. In Edinburgh West, the SNP's taken down pictures of their MP. The row over her business dealings will not so easily disappear. Glen Campbell, BBC News, Edinburgh. You well know that many people will vote for the party that they would most like to form the next UK government and by any measure that's not going to be the SNP. Well, let's wait and see. You know that the SNP right now is ahead in the polls for the next Westminster election so I think that tells us that people uh, are considering very strongly voting for the SNP in that context. Yeah, but not and to, not not to give the United to Kingdom its next Prime Minister. Well, I don't think it's any secret to anybody in Scotland uh, that the next uh, UK Prime Minister will not be somebody from the SNP. So it's not unreasonable to ask then, uh, Nicola Sturgeon, it's not well, unreasonable no. to ask whether the SNP would rather David Cameron or Gordon Brown in number 10. Well, Alec Salmond and uh, the SNP have answered that this week. Our preferred scenario is for a hung parliament because that's the scenario. Somebody still has to be Prime the Minister. The SNP can wield can wield real influence uh, on behalf of the people of Scotland. And I think what people in Scotland want to see at the election are MPs elected who they know will go to Westminster and vote in Scotland's interest. Yes, yeah, so you, you still need a Prime Minister a and you're still not so telling me who you would prefer. Against the government, so be it.
Who would you well, prefer? Because I don't. To, but, well, I'm not going to answer that question because what I want to see are SNP MPs at Westminster fighting Scotland's corner, standing up for Scotland, uh, and making sure that our interests are protected. But isn't the honest answer? And there are many people at the conference who would admit this privately that the SNP can't wait for the Conservatives to get back into power because you believe that that will further the cause of independence faster than if Labour hang on to power. If Alex Salmond was in a position to choose who became the next UK Prime Minister, would it be Cameron or would it be Brown? Well, I think one might imagine it would be David Cameron. I mean, Conservatives tonight have said the First Minister should take off the table, talk of another independence referendum, that that would cause more division and upheaval. Of course, the First Minister is not prepared to do that, even though at this stage it may seem that she has more support for the concept in the Irish Senate than she does in the Scottish Parliament or amongst the wider Scottish public. Well, meanwhile, the SNP's International Affairs spokesman Alex Salmond has faced some criticism for not being in the House of Commons for the Prime Minister's statement. Our political correspondent Glenn Campbell is at Holyrood tonight. So, Glenn, where was Mr Salmond? They spotted him in the chamber here at Holyrood for question time, but it's where he went next that has irritated his critics. At lunchtime, Alex Salmond was in the Scottish National Portrait Gallery, unveiling a new portrait of himself by the artist Gerard M. Burns. Now, his political opponents say that is to put ego ahead of parliamentary duty. Labour say that it's ridiculous he wasn't in the House of Commons as the Prime Minister set out the case for airstrikes against so-called Islamic State targets in Syria. The SNP say this criticism is crass because within the last hour here at Holyrood, Alex Salmond has been hosting a reception for war veterans. They say he spent much of the day in this parliament representing his constituents because remember he is both an MSP and an MP. The Nationalists also make clear that if and when there is to be a vote on military action in Syria, Alex Salmond will be in his place in the House of Commons and will make his views heard. Glenn, many thanks for that. It's not an exaggeration to say it's been a shambles. Uh, students, many of them leaving home for the first time, some as young as 17, uh, were excited about going to university and college uh, and have been met with uh, uncertainty and a lack of clarity. And what we've seen is so many mixed messages from the Scottish Government. Well, I'm joined from Margaret Ferrier's Rutherland constituency by our chief political correspondent, Glenn Campbell. Glenn, how embarrassing is this for the First Minister? Oh, it's usually embarrassing for Nicola Sturgeon, who's telling us every day to obey the rules, and here one of her own breaks them. But certainly this has been a huge controversy for Mr Swinney. As his opponents have been pointing out, it's not the first in his term as Education Secretary. I think he is damaged by this. I'm joined from Holyrood by our Chief Political Correspondent, Glenn Campbell now. Glenn, more divergence today. No change to UK government advice on the wearing of face coverings. They say the science on this is weak. Now that, as far as I know, is the same science available to Nicola Sturgeon and the Scottish government who judge it to be sufficiently strong to merit this change in advice. This evening, the UK government's health secretary has announced that coronavirus tests will now be available to anyone living or working in a care home in England. The Scottish Government, although it is expanding testing, including into care homes, has not made the same commitment, despite pressure from the Conservatives, Labour and the Scottish Greens at Holyrood Question Time. Here's our Chief Political Correspondent, Glenn Campbell. The expansion of free childcare is the latest casualty of coronavirus, and it's a big frustration for some parents. It was the centrepiece of the SNP's programme for government. By 2020, we will deliver 30 hours a week for every three- and four-year-old and eligible two-year-old across our country. But now the August deadline's been dropped and no new target date set. Earlier this month, watchdogs at Audit Scotland said there were already significant risks around getting everything done on that timescale. We've been saying for a long time that councils were struggling to be in a position anyway prior to the coronavirus crisis to deliver this 
this promise. Uh, the Tories are already the second place party here at the Scottish Parliament, but they start the next Holyrood election campaign 30 odd seats behind the Nationalists, but they hope that they can do better next time, not least because there will be a focus on Holyrood issues and the Scottish Government does have problems piling up. There's the scandal over the CalMac ferry contracts. There are problems in hospitals that have led to a, a public inquiry, underperformance in areas of education and all that before you consider the recent resignation of Finance Secretary Derek Mackay. Lisa Mandy, I think, is more uh, determined uh, to avoid there being another referendum and has uh, said that she believes the once in a generation uh, pledge from uh, 2014 should stand. Glenn joins me now. You say more detail is required. When are we likely to get it? Well, I'm not sure about the exact timescale, but Nicola Sturgeon did say today that the Scottish Government would set out in frank detail how it proposes to secure independent membership of the EU. And the border question would be a key part of that, because if Scotland was to be in the EU and its single market and England and Wales was outside, perhaps moving further away from EU rules, it would be reasonably expected that in those circumstances there would need to be checks on goods crossing that border. At the weekend, some in the SNP, uh, like Joanna Cherry, the MP, suggested Holyrood should be ready to put through its own referendum bill and defend that in the courts if necessary. Nicola Sturgeon said today uh, that while she hasn't ruled out testing the legality of that, she thought her party would be better building the case for independence. Of course, her political opponents would prefer if she parked independence altogether and focused on Hollywood issues like the NHS and education. Our chief political correspondent, Glenn Campbell, went in search of Neil Hanvey in the Kirkcaldy and Cowdenbeath constituency. We seek him here. We seek him there. In Kirkcaldy and Cowdenbeath, we seek Neil Hanvey everywhere. Nicola Sturgeon's party says it has withdrawn all support from his campaign. But the Labour candidate, who's defending a majority of just 259, is not convinced Mr Hanvey has been cut loose. And he still seems to be using SNP colours. I went to find him at his new crowdfunded campaign HQ. I don't think there's anyone in. No sign of him either at the Yes Hub in Kirkcaldy. The three other candidates were not available for interview in the constituency, but the Conservatives' Kathleen Leslie, the Liberal Democrats' Jill Cole Hamilton and the Brexit Party's Mitch William are all against Indiref 2 and in favour of Scotland staying in the UK. So we've tried ringing Neil Hanvey, we've called at his office, we've exchanged messages with him online and it's clear that he really doesn't want to do an interview. We won't know if his wish to be allowed back into the party will be granted or not until the SNP's disciplinary process concludes after this Christmas election. It's no surprise that Boris Johnson and every other candidate for the leadership of what is the Conservative and Unionist Party wants Scotland to stay in the UK. All those who seek to walk through this door as Prime Minister oppose another independence referendum, but some sound more hardline than others. The Home Secretary, Sajid Javid, says he won't allow Indiref 2 if he becomes Prime Minister, words echoed by the former Work and Pension Secretary, Esther McVeigh. The former Brexit Secretary, Dominic Raab, says it's a once-in-a-generation event, while the former Commons leader, Andrea Leadsom, says only that she would not seek another referendum. The Foreign Secretary told me public opinion would be his guide. For me, it's the Scottish people who are saying loud and clear they do not want another independence referendum. You're saying no, I never? Think, I think, well, I think leaders, political leaders in Scotland and the UK should listen to the people of Scotland. That's still a no from Mr Hunt. Opposition that nationalists think could drive up support for an independence vote as the UK prepares to leave the EU. A Brexit that works for people in Culloden as well as Canary Wharf. Under his leadership, the Foreign Secretary hints at a more flexible approach to post-Brexit visas. 
And in Scotland's case, that means making sure that we construct a post-Brexit immigration policy that works for the Scottish economy. The Environment Secretary Michael Gove, who has most declared supporters among Scottish Tory MPs, was also talking about the need for flexibility on migration at the Scottish Affairs Committee today. This Scottish Tory MP wants candidates to promise a lower earnings threshold for migrant workers to win her support. I don't think it's about pulling up the drawbridge and having an unnecessary cap. I don't think you know, that the, the complete freedom of movement entirely works for us. I think we need to positively manage migration. The International Development Secretary wants to give the UK Government Department for Scotland more clout. A stronger, more powerful version of the Secretary of State for Scotland with the money behind it, with the resources behind it. European structural funds, billions of pounds. The Health Secretary thinks the UK needs to get better at self-promotion. I want to make sure that the union is at the heart of everything that the UK government does. I want to see the UK government doing more to explain the value of the union. There are already 11 leadership wannabes with the campaign due to begin formally on Monday. Tory MPs, including the 13 elected in Scotland, will select their favourite two from which Conservative Party members will choose. Glenn Campbell, reporting Scotland. But this election has been about stopping Brexit, giving the people of Scotland a say in our future and proving to the UK that we want something different out of this. We, want, we voted clearly to remain in the referendum. We voted clearly to remain again. So have you turned your back then on the third of SNP supporters who voted leave in 2016? Not in the slightest. Uh, I've reached out to absolutely every voter from every perspective. And, and you want to stop Brexit? The EU's not offering Scotland any special Brexit deal. The talks that will determine Brexit are those between Michel Barnier and the UK.